Hey everyone, so welcome to Hello Spring, my brand new weekly podcast hosted by myself, Steven, or you may know me as Spring Sims, aka the yellow obsessed kid of the internet on YouTube and Twitch. And today is actually the very first episode of my podcast, which is so exciting to say because it's also simultaneously my 25th birthday, the year of my birth, February 22nd. And I thought, why not embark on a new journey and share with you all my life lessons that I've learned in my life of living, especially years to come in a podcast format. But today is a more of an introduction of who I am, what this podcast is all about, my plans for it, kind of give you a little bit of a wrap up lowdown of my 2020 and especially some of the, my 2021 resolutions. But before we hop into today's episode, I wanted to say thank you all so much for leaving those kind and loving comments you left from last week on my trailer announcement for my podcast. And it really means a lot that you all are very excited for this podcast and you're looking forward to all the guests that I'm going to have on this podcast and more things to come because I'm very excited as well. Because if you told me for a five years ago that I would be starting a podcast in 2021 or like in a few years, I would have called you crazy because I did not know what a podcast was until like two years ago. And then I was hooked. And then when I did more research last year about what podcasting is and everything, I was even more hooked and so much more excited to even like start doing it and recording and playing everything out. And so here I am today doing the said thing. And so hopefully you all will enjoy the episodes to come there. I do have some guests lined up for future episodes that I think you're all very excited to hear from because I've already recorded them and I'm way ahead of schedule and it feels good to be ahead of schedule for a new passion project. And this is kind of a way where I can document my journey of who I am, how I'm going to be in five years and see where life goes from here because podcasting is new to me. It's a thing where I explore a new horizon, a newfound creative outlet for me to express how I'm feeling and kind of give you insights of what it's like being a content creator on YouTube and Twitch or doing social media for a living or having like sponsorships, traveling to places, mental health, the Sims community, video games and everything because I think that's very important to kind of give you all a lowdown of what it's actually really like because I feel like no one really explains it or really tells people about it but they give you bits and pieces but not the whole thing. And that is why I'm starting this podcast, so you all can kind of get more of an insight about who I am, what I do, and also from other people as well. But if you're listening to this podcast for the very first time and you do not know who I am, I am Steven, that is my real name, or Spring Sims. You can find me on YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, and Twitter. I make a variety of content on Twitch where I stream five times out of the week from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. Or you can find me on YouTube where I make a variety of Sims content based around the Sims 1, 2, 3, and 4, and more to come. So you're probably thinking, why did this child make a podcast and why did he call it Hell is Spring. Well, let me just tell you because I have a bunch of receipts and I have a lot of storytelling that I want to share with you all in this podcast episode for the very first one. So you can kind of get more of a lowdown. Around 2018, back in December of 2018, I had this idea of starting a podcast because I've been doing a lot of research and I saw a bunch of my other friends and other YouTubers making podcasts. I'm like, oh, it's my time. I can make a podcast about my Sims and my Sim stories and all that stuff. But then the more I started to think about it, a months after that where I had the name idea of like the soul soul podcast or you know the sims podcast or my name's the steven podcast or whatever and the more I thought about it I'm like I don't really want to box myself in because I've been on the internet for nearly a decade making only but sims content about the sims around the sims for nearly a decade and if you know this you can be burnt out very easily if you constantly make the same content over and over and over and nothing's changing and you're constantly trying to reinvent yourself and make up new ideas and then eventually you just like don't want to do it anymore well I was at the point where I was like I don't want to do sims anymore I don't want to make content around the sims anymore and I realized that I wanted to do another project make a new passion project for myself where I can focus my work on something that will have some sustainability where I can become more motivated to make sims content again if I'm feeling like it and hopefully one day inspire other people to do it as well and then I asked myself do I want to make a podcast just about the sims do I want to make a podcast only about one thing and that's it I told myself no and I thought why not do more research and listen to more podcasts and kind of learn from that and kind of write down different ideas that I think sound interesting and ask my friends if they are interested in podcasting or different ideas that I can add into a podcast and they gave me all these good ideas that it was just like too good and I'm like 
am I good enough for this? And I thought to myself, no, I'm not. But they, my friends gave me the motivation and inspiration to go forth in my endeavors and just do it and see what would happen. And here I am today doing the thing and I'm so happy that I'm doing it. And so this podcast is more than just The Sims. It's about video games, social media, content creation, mental health, and even like different topics that may come up here and there with like podcast guests that I might have on in future episodes. And so I'm just pleased to know and to say that this is going to be a ride, definitely a ride for the ages. But Back to my story. Hello Spring was an idea that I had because people always says hello Spring in like my streams or in person if I go to like conventions or whatever. I was like, that's a common phrase that people say all the time to me. So I thought to myself, why not call it Hello Spring? It's a common catchphrase people actually use a lot during the spring season, especially when people are interacting with me on social media, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, YouTube comments, TikTok, or even in my live streams in my chat where they hop in and say, hello, spring. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. And you know, that saying right there really means a lot to me because I always preach and teach to people saying that your self-care, your well-being, your mental health always comes first, no matter what, because it's okay to not to be okay sometimes. And like, there are days where I'm like, I'm not feeling the best and people ask me how I'm doing. And I give them the honest, raw, real answer because sometimes I am not okay. But today, it's a good day because today is my birthday and I want to celebrate by sharing with you all my life story of 25 years, but not really. That'll be another episode for another time. Might be episode two. We'll have to see. But for the most part, that's all I really have to say about that. Just because I think that with this podcast, I want to be able to kind of give you the raw, real answers, the raw, real conversations that sometimes you may not hear from me or from other people on social media or on YouTube or on Twitch, because you only technically see a one side of a person where you see like a pre-recorded video that's edited very well, or, you know, not edited, or you see a live stream that's like 12 hours, three hours, two hours, one hour long, or even 30 minutes. And you don't really get the full like person or the, the, the full side of that person where sometimes they don't want to share, or sometimes they just don't want to, you know, don't have the time to share those moments. And I think with podcasting, it's more of a long length form type of platform that allows people to kind of express how they're feeling without having to be in front of a camera with lights on and have to be like picture perfect, edited, all that stuff. Because like I said, I've been on the internet for nearly a decade and all I knew was about editing, take out all the, all the breathing cuts and like be perfect, be that, be this, be that. And it was a lot. And social media can definitely consume you. And I went into social media. I went into like basically just YouTube during high school, I kind of just went into it thinking that I want to be able to kind of share my stories with other people who have like similar values to me and kind of express how I'm feeling through video form. And granted, I didn't do lifestyle. I didn't do, you know, get ready with me. I didn't do any of those type of like real people, you know, content. I made Sims content where I put all of my creativity, my energy, myself into my work, where I was going through a tough time in high school where I was uh, I was bullied. I was bullied in high school a lot. It was a very traumatic life in my in my life and during high school because drama was was real. And I had my friends around me who supported me, who helped me through a lot where I did show choir. I did choir. I did, you know, yearbook. I did my newscast. I was in four different clubs at once in high school. So I kept myself busy, but I still like, I still did YouTube because it's that one place where I got to escape that made me feel happy where I got to be me instead of like somebody else, you know, because I was, I'm more of an introverted person where I can, you know, I would like to be alone sometimes but I can be extroverted at sometimes. Like I can be social when I want to. And like, if I'm not wanting to be social, I want to be left alone sometimes. And so let me know in the comments or in the reviews, are you an introverted person or are you an extroverted person? Or are you both? And for me, I'm both. I'm an introvert. That's what people tell me a lot. And I can kind of see it in myself at times. But I think since that we're all in quarantine, my introvert itself is more like shown sometimes on like on the internet. But I think that hopefully one day I can become more of an extroverted and kind of shine the light on other people. Because people tell me that when I walk in the room, the room just brightens up even more because I walk in I'm like, OK, that seems great. Totally fine. But I really appreciate that. I really appreciate the kind comments, the kind sayings, the kind everything. In all my life, all I've ever wanted uh, for the world was to let the world know, but also kind of just let people like spread love, spread kindness, spread positivity, because if you reflect that 
out into the world, it'll reflect back onto you. So like whatever you put out into the universe will come back to you, good or bad. And so I always put out positivity, kindness, you know, sharing congratulations, sharing my passion for things and celebrating the things that are necessary. And I'm happy that I'm able to have a platform that I'm able to share those type of things and people agree or disagree nine times out of 10 agree with me, which is which helps too, because I don't like confrontation. I don't like arguing. I do that in The Sims for me. I don't got time for drama. But for the most part, like I said, I think that for what I'm trying to do with this podcast is to inspire, to share, to educate, to learn, and to grow. And I'm happy that we can all grow together and try out new and better things that we can either, you know, rediscover that we learned back in when we were younger, but pick back up and doing it better than ever before. Like I said, I started YouTube back in high school. And when I started making videos, I didn't know anything about it. But the more that I did it, the more I started to enjoy it. And the more that I started to learn from other people and kind of grew from that. And when I started making a community and meeting other people who make the same content that I do, it felt more rewarding because I got to kind of relate to other people and how they're feeling and how they do things and kind of, you know, have the sense of family. Because I think that with The Sims for me is that I I play The Sims for me to escape reality, to be able to create stories that aren't really being seen out in real life because sometimes it's a touchy subject or it's sometimes just not really as quote unquote popular in society back then. And now it, it kind of is, but still isn't. And I'm, I'm happy to be able to kind of share all these things with you because again, you only technically see one side of me or you see one set of a person and podcasting is a newfound form of things that you get the real raw honest moments it's like it's so weird because with podcasting I've listened to so many podcasts in my life that I was like I've watched them on YouTube or I've seen them before and like other things that I'm seeing a whole new side of them and it feels like I can connect with them even more and it feels good and I'm just I'm just so happy I just I tend to ramble a lot in podcasts or ramble a lot in general. And so this podcast will have structure, but it will be definitely rambly at times where you'll hopefully, again, learn something from it, from my mistakes, where you learn from something from my mistakes and you don't do them in your life. Because I'm 25. I've lived. I've seen things but not really. I'm just starting. I'm basically just starting my life. I'm fully, I'm grown enough to uh, rent a car. I think it might have changed. I really don't know because all my life I thought, oh, once you turn 25, you're a full grown adult because you can basically do literally anything legally. Like you can drink, which I don't drink because I'm a child. And when you're 25, you can rent a car. Because I was like, ooh, woo, woo, woo. Finally, I can rent a car. But will I do that? No, because I'm too lazy for any of that, for paperwork and schooling ruined that for me. And that's okay. I learned something from school. I've learned that you can explore literally anything and everything in your life. And you may like it, you may not like it. And you just hope for the best. Like you try out different things to see what your interests will be like later on in your life. And now that I'm saying this now, I think high school, is is a huge learning lesson for a lot of people where you're in a newfound form of education, but you're also in a newfound form of discovering yourself, who you want to be, where you want to go, how are you going to do things like SATs, ACTs, exams, teachers, students, friends, family, all that stuff. It's like high school is a place where you can explore literally anything, where whether it's band, choir, yearbook, newscast, journalism, newspaper, you know, student council, literally health, literally anything and everything. High school is a place where you can discover yourself. And for high school, for me, I've learned that with doing YouTube and doing choir, show choir, yearbook, and my newscast, I've learned that I'm a very creative person. And I put all my craft into my work of YouTube. And all my videos were very emotional, where I got to share the emotional side of me that I didn't get to really share with people out in the real world. More so, I could have shared them in the simulation world, which is what I live for. It's what I thrive and strive to have. And so that being said, high school was a time. That chapter is over. Now moving on to my college chapter, the day that I graduated high school was the year May 2014. And at the time, I didn't have any, I didn't have a job. I didn't have any money. Basically, I didn't have any money. And I was just going through life, figuring out things. And right then and there, literally a month later, 
in June, I started college. I started I started community college because I knew for a fact that I wasn't ready to leave home to go to a four-year college and be in debt because I don't have time for that whatsoever. Not a thing. Not for me. Didn't do it. So I started community college because I knew it was going to be an easier pace for me to kind of manage one, YouTube, and also two, my life, my mental health, my well-being, my sanity, and also earn income as time goes on. And so during the summer, I only had one job. And then when the summer was over for summer classes, it was like, you know, the full semester, August, that stuff. And then I went to a new chapter of my life of having not one, but two jobs, but juggling a part-time school schedule of like, I would say eight credit hours. I think I really don't know. I was going to school part time working two jobs and doing YouTube. But then it dawned to me, I was like, wait a minute, I could do more bigger and better things. And I'm loving the Sims. And this was at the time where I was kind of getting tired of making like sad, emotional videos for Sims where I wanted to kind of redirect a new chapter in my life and make a new YouTube channel called Spring Sims. And that was like the year of 2015. And that's when I found new, exciting, and better content that I either could watch or make myself and inspire other people, but also inspire myself to be creative as them or different. Because we don't we don't want to have the same similar people on the internet because when everyone's the same, it's kind of boring. It's always okay. It's okay to show your quirkiness, your weirdness, another side of you that people don't get to see either in person at family reunions or on the internet, but you're able to express yourself in a newfound way. And I think that's what I wanted to do with Spring Sims express myself in a newfound way where I never talked in front of a camera or in a microphone. I was still learning how to edit and I was still learning how to conform sentences together and make sure it sounded decently okay. At the time, it wasn't. And I bought my first microphone and that was okay. The blue snowball. And I've learned to gradually be more engaging and more excited and entertaining with my videos and editing because editing does help a lot. Let's be real here. Editing can take out your mistakes. But then Bob Ross always says there's no mistakes, only happy accidents. So pretty much my entire YouTube career is a happy accident and that's okay. I'm fine with that. And so in all in all, all I'm trying to say here is show your quirkiness, show your weirdness, be you, be positive, be kind and be thoughtful and spread, you know, the good vibes out into the world and it'll come back to you. And now that I told you my life story, for the most part, I think it's time to give you all a little bit of a lowdown, bit of a summary of what my life was like in 2020. Because let's be honest here, 2020 was a whirlwind of events where we really didn't know what to expect until it actually happened. It was different. It was weird and actually very confusing because when you blink in 2020, you're like, excuse me, what just happened? It's kind of crazy to think about. But for the first two months, I would say for me, it was actually decent because I entered my last semester of university, but it was also the 24th birth year of my life. And it was really cool. I really got to explore new horizons, new ideas, and kind of try them out on my own, along with my parents. And it felt so good to know that I had friends, family, and people who would support me in my endeavors. And it felt good. But I do have to say that for January, I just wrapped up filming The Sims Spark. And then I entered my last semester of university. And I was trying to figure out where I wanted to go, what I wanted to do, and how I was going to get there. Because I was basically going to be done with school forever until I wanted to go back, which won't be for another few years. Let's be honest here. School is not on my mind right now. No, no. <laughs> but I do have to say that I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Like I knew what I wanted to do for like a job and stuff like social media, graphic design, illustration, UI, UX, stuff like that. Like I knew what job I wanted, but I didn't know how I was going to get there and what I had to do in order to get it in the correct way that I wanted to be in. You know what I mean? But I guess, you know, all all, all you need to do is just take time, take things slow and figure things out as things go. And it's all about trusting the process. I've learned to figure out that you just don't have to do things head on and it won't come to you very quickly right then and there. You have to trust the process in order to get where you want to go in life. When February happened, it was my 24th birthday. I felt so excited. And that was like the month and like the day that I wanted to start my podcast, get it ready to go and start it. Like I had everything prepped, but I knew for a fact that I wouldn't be able to kind of get it started because I didn't really know how I was going to do it. I asked all my friends who had podcasts and they have done it before and like bits and pieces of more research of like 2020 
podcasting, analytics, everything. Because I'm a person that likes to research a lot of things, thanks to, thanks to high school mainly. High school basically made me research a lot of stuff. And I thank them for that. Because if it wasn't for high school, I wouldn't be where I am today doing a podcast with all this history, all this knowledge. But when I did a lot more research, I'm like, okay, I think I'm going to wait and do like another like launch date for a podcast and like these other projects that I want to do. Because at, the, at this time, I didn't really have a lot of things going for me, like work wise, besides like YouTube and Twitch. And of course, working with EA and like, you know, going to conventions and stuff. But little did I know that literally the news hit March 16th, boom, quarantine, COVID. I'm like, oh no, oh no, 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 no. And I'm just trying to figure out what's going to happen to EA Play. What's going to happen to Gamescom? What's going to happen to VidCon? Because like this was the year that I was actually going to be free to go to like conventions and stuff and have the money to go to these places and then have have things be have me tied down to something. Because after I graduated, I would only have YouTube and Twitch for like income and as a sponsorships and everything to rely on for like money. But it allowed me to be like free to do whatever I wanted. And that's what I've kind of been doing for the past like I would say like six years of my life, mainly a decade, kind of making money here and there, doing things, sponsorships, traveling, all that jazz. And becoming a moneymaker, becoming my own boss and running my own business. And I've learned to like, you know, try out new things that I haven't done before. And like 2020 was the year where I told myself, that you're going to start doing things that you're scared of doing. Like I started doing face cam on YouTube, which I was very self-conscious and very scared about because I would think, oh, I'm going to, I always assume the worst for comments. And it's not that, it's not that way anymore because I just think, oh, whatever. I don't care. It's my brain telling me something different. But I realized that people actually like face cam and I'm, I'm starting to like it too. And I'm growing in my confidence more by doing face cam like, and talking and for this podcast, I'm, it's a new thing for me, getting the hang of it. I might be a little bit shy, a little bit quiet, because this episode is very, very deep. Like, I'm not kidding. It's deep. Kind of wild, but you know, hey, it is what it is. We're rolling with the punches, but the next episode will be a lot better. Trust me. I just know it. I just know it. But anywho, I'm just so happy because when I graduated university, it was, I was still holding on a long, long secret because I couldn't tell anyone about the Sim Spark, about me being on a TV show and all these things. I had all these videos and photos behind the scenes that I literally could not share. And I'm like, EA, please let me share the content that I filmed. But I said, no, just wait, just wait. And then, you know, it actually happened. And it was like, oh, good, great. Finally, I can like alert it out to the world. And people were like, what, who, where, huh? You were on a TV show since when? It's like, I've been holding on the secret for nearly a half a year. And I'm like, finally, it's out. I no longer have to struggle because that was a hard secret. Let me tell you, not telling people that I was on a TV show about The Sims, mm, a lot happened and I was all right. But then when the show came out, I think that next, that next month later, I announced that I was debt free because of course, you know, when you go to university, you have student loans you take out here and there. Granted, I didn't have that much loans and debt. I wasn't really much in that debt anyway. 19000 not that bad. Granted, I had other jobs on the side, like AmeriCorps and, you know, working at my school. So like we had, I had things working for me. And then thanks to my dad for being in the military and getting like perks and stuff and having a child, things were working in the works for everyone. And so I became debt free in like a few months, which is great. So I don't have to basically pay the government a lot of money per month for student loans. So no more for me, which is great. I'm happy. But then I think it was around like June. I forget what month it was. I really do not remember. It's It was a long time ago. It was a while. But all I do remember is that I got partnered on Twitch, which actually was July. July 23rd was the day I got partnered on Twitch. And my partner twin, if you're listening to this, Rochella, love her to death. She's great. We both got partnered on the same exact day at the exact same time. So we both share a Twitch partner anniversary, which is super cool. Very excited for the one year anniversary for that as well. But we got partnered on Twitch that day. It was a very fun day and it was just so exciting. I was pumped. But moving back to my graduation day, the day that I graduated, we were still in quarantine, of course. You know, virtual graduation, my name scrolled through. 
took a screenshot, threw my hat, and that was it. And then that day, I streamed for 12 hours, raising money for St. Jude, because I believe in children of the future. I love giving back to my community as much as I can, whether it's through money, um, social media, word of mouth, literally anything and everything. I always strive to give back. And I want to be able to kind of celebrate my graduation and my newfound of, you know, charity and a new chapter in my life by raising money for the kids. And so I did that. And it was fun. I had a lot, a lot of fun that day. And I don't remember how much I raised. I believe I raised over four point thousand, yeah, four four thousand dollars for the kids for St. Jude that year, which is wild to think about. Four thousand dollars for St. Jude. My community is absolutely insane. And I appreciate them so much for like helping me raise money. We all raise money together. And again, it's not about how much you raise, it's about what you do to help others and being able to like use my platform for good and raise awareness about, you know, kids at St. Jude who deserve a second chance and the kids in Haiti and just being able to just do literally again, anything and everything just to give back to help other people. Because again, life as you know, it on the internet could go away tomorrow. And what would we have? What would we have left? You know, each other. And that's what we have to do. We have to rely on each other to help we have support or kindness or, you know, relationships or anything because the internet's not forever. And if you still want to give back to your community, you have word of mouth. You have, you know, actual fundraisers in person whenever it's, you know, it's safe to do that. But there's so many other things you can do to help people in the world, no matter what it is. It doesn't have to be online. It could be in your local neighborhood. You can send a check or you can send items like food or clothing or whatever. It's like, again, literally anything and everything you can do to support always, always helps. But then also this year for me, I focused a lot more on my mental health because I've realized I was a hot mess for six years. Literally, I'm not kidding. For six years, I was a hot mess. I was mentally stressed. I was physically stressed and I was emotionally stressed. I cried a lot. I didn't eat a lot, but I did learn a lot though over time. As time went on, I learned a lot about who I am, where I'm going, what I'm going to do, how I'm going to get there, and who are my true, true friends, you know? And I've made a, I made good friends over the past few years, and I'm so grateful for those friendships. And I want to definitely get better, you know, at communicating because I have a hard time communicating to people because I'm very scared and anxious of the result. So I just never ask. But I do have to say that I've learned a lot over the past six years of friendship, communication, mental health how to do better, how to be better for me and my self-care. Because when I'm not okay, I don't do well in content creation. So, you know, we got to fix something here. But then I also learned how to say no more. Because I do have a tendency of tackling on more projects than I can handle, where I'll be on a, not a burnout, but more so like getting close to a burnout, where I'll have like five or 10 projects at once that are literally due in like two weeks or whatever, like a a whole month of projects that I physically cannot do. So I tend to overwork myself sometimes to do all these like sponsorships and, you know, these video ideas that I want to do, but I can't really actually physically do because I don't really know how to execute them well. So I've learned to like say no to certain like projects and videos and sponsorships and other things, because the more you say no, the more, the more better you will feel if that makes any sense. Because you can't always say yes to everything. Because if you say yes to everything, it won't. Sometimes it could work out well for you, but sometimes it cannot work out well for you, depending on how you are in in that state of mind or in that state of being. But yeah, that's kind of like basically what my 2020 was like. It was so much fun. I enjoyed so many different things. And it felt so good to be able to kind of gain new friendships and learn new found things that I didn't learn before in, you know, 2019 or 2018 or when I first graduated, you know, high school, because I was entering into a new brand world, new brand, a brand new world that I didn't know what to expect. But the cool thing, though, about 2020 that I've always wanted to do is that it allowed me to be very happy, healthy and working for myself. And so I started and launched my very own online store, which is super cool to think about because I've watched so many people online having their own like merch line or their own like store or their own physical store. 
whether it's like in person or online or whatever. And I'm like, I'm going to be like 24, 25. I'm like, I want to be able to make a name for myself and be able to share my inspiration, my passion for things out into the world. And so I made an online store. It's called Hello Spring Co. It's basically the exact, the exact same of Spring Sims or Hello Spring, my podcast. So in all in all, everything is lining up correctly. Hello Spring, Hello Spring Co., Spring Sims. I'm all about the positivity, kindness, and wellness and self-care here out in these streets of the internet. It's like, I've been on the internet for nearly a decade. I am starting something. I'm starting a legacy for for the ages where I'm teaching, preaching, helping other people, other creators, other ins- aspiring creators who want to get into this space, who want to, you know, you know dibble dabble into other types of things, whether it's drawing, whether it's making their own online business, whether it's through making content for YouTube or Twitch or or whatever. It's just like, you know, it's an exciting thing that I definitely want to definitely try. And I'm not done. I'm not done yet. I have a lot more exciting things that I'm definitely going to be planning for sure in the near future. Like one day I want to write a book and one day I want to be able to buy my own house and, you know, do like travel the world because I've only been to Germany and I've only been to London once. But I want to be able to explore the world and see what's out there, vlog more, and make write a book one day, a children's book probably, most likely, for illustration. I know, build up my business, build up my legacy, start an LLC. Like, I have so many, like, resolutions, so many dreams that I want to do that I want to be able to achieve, not this year, but, you know, for time to come. And, like, for my 2021 resolutions, probably would have to be, like, again, buy a house, start a book, you know, one day, if I if I ever buy a house, it'd be great this year. Imagine me buying a house in 2021. It could happen. We, we are, we're only like two months in. We have a lot more months to go. So, you know, hope for the best. So buy a house, write a book, a small children's book that I do already have the like the script basically planned out. I just got to draw everything and get it published. But yeah, write a book. I want to start vlogging more. I want to basically be able to travel when it's safe again. I definitely want to also try and... I don't know. I think I definitely want to get into voice acting for sure. I definitely want to get into voice acting and try out that medium and see what it's like and kind of go forth into my endeavors and grow as a person, but also grow as a content creator on the interwebs. Yeah, I I definitely want to do a lot more collaborations and definitely maybe one day do like an art collab. That'd be kind of fun. I don't know. But either way, that's kind of like everything mushed together in like 40 some odd minutes of a podcast episode. I could literally talk for days. I'm a chatty cafe over here in these streets of wherever you are listening to your podcast. I am a chatty cafe. It's a great time. I love it. Hopefully you all love it. We got a lot more episodes to come though. So good times. But before I wrap up this episode and leave you all off with some good old show notes and some promos, I do want to say is say never give up on something that you really want It's difficult to wait, but it's more difficult to regret. That is a one that's one quote that I always will live by. Never give up on something that you really want. It is sometimes difficult to wait, but it's more difficult to regret because if you're if you wait and you also regret it for waiting, it's like, ooh, I wish I should have done that way, way before. Like for me, like doing a podcast, I don't regret waiting, but I do regret like holding it off for a very long time. And so I never gave I never gave up on my dream of starting a podcast. And so I'm doing it today. Now and more future episodes to come. And so if you have a dream, never give up on something that you really want to do, whether it's writing a book or a podcast or a TV show or a movie, whatever you want to do in life, just don't give up. Because if you give up, you might regret it later on in your life. And we don't want that to happen. Honestly, we really don't. No, 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 we don't. Nevertheless, I do hope that you all enjoyed today's episode as much as I did. I had a lot of fun talking because I'm a chatty Kathy and I can talk for ages. I'm literally not kidding. I can talk forever. But for the most part, I did enjoy talking about who I am, what I do, what my plans are for this podcast, why I even started this podcast, my recap of 2020, and especially my 2021 resolutions. And I think it's very important to definitely set goals for yourself, whether it's short term, long term, medium term, no matter what the goal is, you'll definitely reach it one day. And if you reach it, in a day or two. Awesome. But it's always good to kind of set your goals for yourself because you want to set yourself accountable for something that you want to achieve later on in your life or, you know, 
tomorrow, today, next week, whatever you want to do. Because it's important to never give up on something that you want to do, because if you wait, you might regret it. And we don't want to regret things that we want to do, you know, again, later on in our life. But for the most part, again, I do hope you all enjoyed today's episode. Make sure you follow the podcast on Twitter, which is Hello Spring Pod, or Instagram, which is Hello Spring Podcast. All the show notes will be down below of all the links you need to know from this episode. But be sure to subscribe and follow me on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcast. And I will hear from you all next week. Bye.